Wonderful. So it seems like we have reached a level of attendees here, which is fantastic. So once again, welcome to Lund University. My name is Daniel Gunnarsson. I'm working as the Central Administration. I work with international marketing and recruitment, and I will basically be here to guide you through this event today. Um, so with me, I have two lovely colleagues from the Fine and Performing Arts faculty. So I have, well, I will let them introduce themselves in just a second. So what I have with me today, Mai and uh, Rebecca, and they will be able to answer most of the questions you have. So if you have questions, use the Q&A section below, and I will read the questions out to our panelists. So I will now let my lovely colleagues here present themselves. So I think we will start with Rebecca. Rebecca, who are you? Hello, uh, I'm Rebecca Lasko. I work as program coordinator at Malmö Academy of Music at the performance and church music department there. Uh, and mainly I work with the symphony orchestra programs, uh, the church music programs and early music, but I'm gladly also answering uh, questions about our other classical programs or jazz improvisation, folk and world music or whatever. So yes, happy to meet you here. And Mai, please go ahead. Thank you, Daniel, and thank you, Rebecca. And my name is Mai Hesse, and I'm the director of Malmö Art Academy. Um, and uh, I'm also very happy to answer any questions relating to the fine arts programs that we have um, four different programs in our art academy. So I'm looking forward for some questions. Wonderful, thank you. So previous to this event, we have collected a couple of questions from students that unfortunately couldn't join us. So I think I will kick this session off by answer, well, asking you a little bit of a question here. So, Why would you, well, why do you think that a student who is interested in the subject area that you represent here today should apply to your program or programs at Lund University? And I think I will ask this question directly to Rebecca first. So, Rebecca. Yes, well, uh, uh, Malmö Academy of Music can provide a, a, a very uh, good environment uh, for you who want to study uh, music on a high professional level uh, and reach um, a high level within within um, symphony orchestra instruments or uh, other genres and freelance uh, and and so um, and we can provide a good uh, environment to study in good good um, um, practice uh, uh, possibilities and teachers uh, on uh, with a very high artistic level and so um, so well uh, yes that's why I think you should choose this this uh, school to study in. Wonderful, thank you. And my why would they decide to come to you guys? I think you would choose to go to Malmö Art Academy because we're amongst the top five of the European art academies. Um, we have a highly specialized program in terms of individualized curriculum. Um, so the students get their own studios and we have an incredibly international faculty. We have high profile artists amongst our professors and teachers. Um, we have wonderful workshop facilities but most of all that you as an art student really get the sense of developing your own curriculum throughout the time. You can select your own courses related directly to practice. We are interdisciplinary and we are international. That's the core of our education. So I think um, it's also highly competitive to get accepted to the Art Academy. It's 2% that gets accepted to the BFA program. We have around 600 applicants um, for 12 spots. It's around 5% that gets accepted to the master's program. And, and uh, we also have a very high demand in terms of our doctoral studies. Um, but I think in order to be prepared for this application process is really to understand, understand why you would want to attend such program, what it means in terms of artistic practice um, 
how you, you were thinking about developing throughout the years, the three years of the BFA program or the two years of the MFA program. So, so overall, um, I mean, if you are interested in high quality and uh, the best possibilities for an artistic uh, practice and career, then you should choose Manmart Academy. Wonderful, thank you so much. So you talked a little bit about the fact that it's very competitive and I mean, yeah, Lund University in general is, is competitive, but talking about that, so what kind of students are you looking for to your programs in general? So could Rebecca maybe elaborate a little bit about what you're looking for in students? Um, we are of course looking at uh, for students who want to develop uh, and want to um, give everything uh, in their art and, and music development, of course. Uh, Otherwise, I don't think we look for, we don't look, we don't have a, a package on what, what students we, we want to have. I mean, we want students who uh, want to be part of this house and uh, make it develop within the outside cultural life. I mean, we are not a set conservatorio that should be in one way for the rest of our lives. We want to, uh, bring in new energy and new ideas to our house, of course. Um, so I mean, uh, we need people who want to bring everything to their music uh, life here uh, and, and really uh, go deep, deepen into, into the subjects here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. And my, why would they, well, what are you looking for in students? So when we are doing the admission works, we're looking at um, how is what is the potential of an artistic practice? Um, the sort of wide range across media. We're not we're not accepting particular medias. One year we can accept one painter, and the next year, like we can accept ten painters. Uh, so it's 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 really about the quality of um, the artistic practice, and also that we see a potential for development throughout the years because I mean you should not be a full uh, grown artist when you apply but we see that there is a potential here but also also looking at where did you where did you study before there's a lot of these preparatory further education schools before we're also looking at how have you worked uh, with your art practice before applying for the art academy and also how are you seeing yourself in relation to uh, the wider art context? So you orient yourself towards the contemporary art scene as well. And um, so we get a sense of where are you in terms of, um, of how, how your artistic practice and, and method and matters um, are linked to your portfolio because you also apply with the portfolio. We see your, your work samples and then we do an interview. So, but I mean, dedicated, artists and art students that are interested in really making the most out of this incredibly opportunity. That's what we're looking for uh, with engagement and a drive. Thank you so much. And while we're talking about the students, we have a question here from one of our attendees who would like to know if there is an upper age limit or can anyone apply? And I think I can ask that to May, May first. Uh, so do you have an upper age limit? But we don't have an upper age limit and it's still I mean of course we're looking at what has gone before because uh, if you'd worked uh, uh, if you had had a gap in your artistic practice for 20 years that's something the admission board would ask what what has happened during these 20 years right so it's also something about does it then adds up to how the quality of the artistic work is uh, today so I mean in that sense we don't uh, we don't necessarily look at the 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 age in that sense as an upper age limit we also look at um, are you too fully complete in your expression in a way because that's also there needs to be a potential for development as a student so so I think uh, and I mean as I mean um, being uh, being in the 40s, I mean, I'm, I'm pretty set myself. So I think I would make a terrible student today, but uh, but uh, 10 years ago it would look different, right? So it's also something about um, that to give that understanding um, that we are really looking at the quality of the work and we're also looking at the potential of um, a very thriving um, student engagement throughout the time at school. Wonderful. And Rebecca, do you have an upper age limit? 
No, we don't. Uh, as, and as Mai uh, already mentioned, it's pretty the same here. The Jira groups look, of course, on, uh, at the um, development and what you have done so far. Um, so, but, but we don't have an age limit. Uh, but of course, if you are 50 years old and haven't done anything before or uh, with the gap that you also mentioned, Mai, uh, the jury, of course, look at that too, but otherwise there's no age limit, no. That's fantastic. I think that the student will be very pleased to hear that. I have no about the <laughs> idea about the age of the student, but that's probably the reason why they asked this question. We have another question here as well that is a bit interesting and it's directed towards the Master of Fine Arts. And it's about um, students, if they have a design background and wants to apply for the Master of Fine Arts, what have you, what do you say about that? Would that be okay? So why? We have a kind of, kind of um, a wider uh, reading of uh, what the criteria is, but I mean, it, it comes down to the work because it's, it's clear if you have like a design background and then the works that you're presenting when submitting your application is also oriented towards function and design in a very particular manner, that would be of course in competition with the other uh, applicants. And I mean, that could, uh, could weigh uh, in, in different directions. But I mean, if you have a solid art practice applying for the master's program and then you're, you're stemming from a background in design, but you're also able to argue um, why the art academy would have suitable place for you. I mean, it will be considered uh, on equal terms as the rest of them. Wonderful, thank you so much. So basically, I just want to highlight to all the students, if you have any new Antadines joining us, that if you have any questions, you're more than welcome to ask them by using the Q&A section uh, below in the Zoom app. It's basically says Q&A, questions and answers, and you just write your question and we will try to present them to our lovely panelists here today. And we have another question here, and it's basically about the language of instruction. So the students, do they need to take a language test to make an application? And I think we can start with Rebecca. For our master's program, we do not have, have that requirement. Uh, the programs are given in Swedish and in English, but, but uh, as English spoken student, uh, you can study uh, our master's program here. On bachelor's level, we only provide uh, folk and world music uh, in English. Uh, and the other programs are given in Swedish. And I mean, similar to what Rebecca said, that we don't have, we don't require language test. Um, we do have actually this year um, uh, English speaking students in a BFA program, and then we just kind of swap into English. So we're a very small institution, and we have this uh, international premise built into the art academy uh from the from the beginning so um it's very um it's very easy to negotiate that um in terms of language but we do not require a test fantastic so we usually get this question from a lot of students but is it possible to study abroad while studying a program with you so rebecca can your students study abroad while being part of your program. Yes, that's very common that our students do a term or two uh, outside in Europe or uh, uh, out in the world. Uh, and um, we have a lot of collaborations with other schools and there are also uh, uh, the Erasmus uh, collaboration that gives you opportunities to many, many schools. Um, of course, you have to apply there uh, and be admitted. Uh, but then you can do a term or two uh, and get the, that time credit uh, to your study here uh, in Malmö. Uh, so that's really a good opportunity. We have about maybe 20 students that go out uh, every year and 20 in. So we also have, of course, a lot of incoming exchange students. Mm -hmm. And uh, equal yeah. here is also very common that you do um, uh, study abroad. Um, usually we have like these uh, requirements that when you in your BFA three, the final year of your bachelor and also the final year of the master's, we do not recommend people to do um, study abroad because they need to focus on the exam works. But besides from that, we have a lot of collaborations um, with, the, with different schools um, around the world. 
Perfect. Thank you so much. So I have a few other questions here. Um, and we have a question here, which I believe is targeted towards the bachelor's program. And I do apologize that my, my head is flickering all over the place. But I have a wide screen in front of me. It's not that I'm not interested. It's just that the questions are all over here. So uh, the student writes that uh, they saw that the program required something like mathematics B or history level B. And this is an international student from Taiwan. And they wonder, like, what would that entail? Would their transcripts from their home country be OK when they make an application? Or they, do they need any other kind of certification to prove this? So I think I will uh, ask Mai first. I think usually that that people are submitting their their the documentation from their home countries. If there's any concern um, through the application process, they will be contacted in terms of that. So that's usually the, like in terms of the system. So so make make sure to upload those documents that you have, and if uh, in any doubt, then you will hear back from us and um, or the like through the system as well. And I agree, if you just upload it to your university admissions uh, or amtagling.se, if that is where you apply, then they will uh, also about, uh, sometimes it's about translating uh, your documents and translation of the documents and so, so but they will, they will contact you about that. Uh, and we also, if it's any questions about, if you do your entrance exams here, and if it's any questions about your, uh, if your, uh, if it's possible for you to study here, then then we will we will look at that. Uh, yeah. Wonderful. Thank you so much. So we have another question here that is very specific. Uh, so, is a student that in their first cycle studied bachelor's in finance, second cycle in a master's was arts and culture management, and they're now planning to ex extend into studying and researching in performing arts, theater, choreography, etc. Hmm. Um, <laughs> so they basically wonder here, would you recommend applying for another master's degree at your art faculties or wait for a PhD vacancy if there's any? So basically, I guess, what profile are you looking for for your programs? Um, and I mean, this is performing arts. So it's not really relevant to you guys, I guess. So yeah, so basically, I will send, I didn't see the performing arts until way too late. So I will basically send a text message to the students instead. And let's go on with the next question. So what does a typical day or week look like for a student on your programs? So Rebecca, what can a student expect from a work week at your faculty? Yeah, um, if you study a master's program, uh, you during your bachelor studies have done most of the theoretical uh, theoretic uh, courses as music theory and music history and such. Uh, so during your master's studies, it's more focused on on your your performance and uh, your own uh, development and and work with your instrument. Uh, so uh, typical. Maybe I should talk about the week because uh, during a week you have your individual studies in your main instrument and you have chamber music, uh, both rehearsing with, with uh, your ensembles, but also teaching with your uh, teacher for the chamber music. Uh, you also do um, other types of ensembles as um, maybe wind ensemble or string ensemble and such bigger ensembles. Uh, and um, also we do project weeks during the year uh, where you are to play uh, symphony orchestra projects or we do master classes uh, or composition projects, collaborations with uh, professional institutions, uh, orchestras uh, in the in institutions uh, uh, during those project weeks. Um, so it's pretty different from, from week to week and from day to day, but, but during your whole studies, you have the individual and ensemble studies in different, uh, uh, in different uh, sizes. And so uh, also uh, we give you courses in um, 
uh, entrepreneurship and uh, um, also uh, uh, um, a more uh, psychological course uh, within within the um, scenic artistic uh, how to how to work with your mind and the artistic uh, uh, person uh, that you are so um, yeah that's pretty much it uh, what you do during your master studies here and of course uh, your your um, exam uh, during your second year uh, you work also uh, with your deg degree project um, and, and during a longer time you work partly the main part of the degree project is your uh, degree concert your exam concert uh, and but you also do a reflecting part uh, which can be a, a written part that you also do uh, yeah wonderful thank you and why what does a typical day or week look like for a student at your programs? Completely different. So for, because we work with individualized curriculum. So uh, part of it would be studio time. Part of it will be courses, but it will look very different from student to student, depending on your field of interest. It can be everything from theory courses, close readings. It can be um, uh, creative courses. It can be technical courses. So it, it looks very different. Um, and of course, um, we kind of work across the, the all the years, like from BFA to MFA. So if you have a particular course you're interested in, you're, you're allowed to attend that. Um, I would say for the BFA group, the BFA three students, they work towards a group exhibition as their like, practical part of the exam. And then they write a five page essay. That's their BFA three, uh, the, the finally of the BFA um, on master's level, um, you in the in the fine arts program and the studio program, you work towards a solo exhibition and you write a 10 page reflection and essay. Um, and it's quite rare to have an institution that provides solo exhibitions for. So we have 15 solo exhibitions throughout the year. Um, and that's um, it's a quite large space that you have to fill. Uh, so it takes a year to to go into that exam project. For the Master of Fine Arts in Artistic Research, um, it's a little bit more collective group sessions because it's about writing a proposal, preparing for uh, applying for a PhD program in the future. Um, and their exam works will be writing a 20 page essay where uh, four of the pages will be a research proposal um, and then do a visual presentation of the research project. And that will take place in a research center. Uh, and of course, on doctoral level, it looks very, very different. Uh, you have individual um, sessions and seminars throughout up to four years, and then you do your um, your public defense. And we actually do have a public defense tomorrow. And it's all, all, always very special when it comes to that, that part. Um, so it looks, I mean, it looks very different depending on which programs you are attending. Um, and again, because it is so individualized, um, it's also up, for, up to the students to decide which pattern or which, which, which daily activities they want to attend in. Thank you so much. So we have another question here. So do your programs have any connection or collaboration with like industry or society? And if so, in what way? So Rebecca, I mean, church music and everything. So what, what connections do you have with like the yeah. real world outside of academia? <laughs> Beginning with the church music programs, they have a um, internship in the in the uh, during their whole studies uh, um, for weeks during the studies. Not not every week, of course. Um, and also for symphony orchestra students, they have a internship in the um, uh, professional orchestras in the region, as Malmo Symphony Orchestra, Helsingborg Symphony Orchestra, and Malmo Opera Orchestra. Um, also, we have uh, we we provide uh, an opera uh, or uh, for repetiteurs or vocalists uh, with together with the Malmö Opera that we um, that you during your whole two years of study um, um, are part of the the everyday uh, life at the opera house. Uh, so you you take part of. Uh, rehearsals and, and um, 
ordinary uh, productions there. Um, um, so you are you are kind of part of the house during your two year years of study um, for those two programs uh, for for uh, vocal and drama studies and repetiteur studies. Um, so we have a, a also for the composition studies. I should say uh, that we have um, also collaborations with the orchestras, not only here in the region but also up north in Sweden. Uh, so we. Uh, provide projects where you you get your your music to actually be performed by professional orchestras. Uh, yeah, so we have a strong strong relationship with with the uh, uh, institutions uh, around. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Wonderful and May, yes. And for the Art Academy, I mean, um, we do have collaborations with the uh, with the local arts institutions. We also have with other other um, art schools. Um, so, but it's it's more sort of in the sense we don't do internships because these years are dedicated to developing own artistic practice in that sense. Uh, but we have very close collaboration with them um, with the artist run scene in Malmo. A lot of our uh, former students have uh, stayed here and uh, established themselves. Um, so really just um, making sure that there is a dialogue between the institutions and our students. We have a lot of people, external uh, curators uh, coming from the outside and just kind of bringing in the scene and the arts, arts um, institutions into our art academy. So that's sort of the links that we do at the art academy between um, the overall structures of the the art world and then sort of the more like formal structures of an, an art school. Wonderful. So following up on that, basically, what are the job opportunities for students who graduate from your program? I mean, it's, it's a different from the different parts of the faculty here, but I mean, still, like, could you give us any idea? So Rebecca, what are the job opportunities for students? Uh, as I mean, mentioned earlier, it's uh, there are jobs in in the institutions as uh, the concert and opera houses, and of course also for church music mu musicians. There are a lot of jobs. I mean, uh, in Sweden, we we really are uh, we really need a lot of church musicians in the near future. Uh, so that's really good opportunities there. Uh, as as um, for but for many of our our students, of course, they they also work as freelance musicians within the free freelance culture life. Uh, and a good thing with the Öresund region is that we are very close to to uh, I mean Europe and uh, Denmark and rest of Europe. Uh, so there's good of opportunities to really. Uh, have a big, big field uh, working uh, uh, to work as as a freelance musician. Um, also for composers, of course, uh, there's there's a big freelance market for them as well. But um, there are also possibilities to be uh, composer in residence at at the concert houses, and so we have a lot of alums that. Uh, that uh, did this after their studies here. Um, yeah, so that's how it looks like. Of course, I can also mention that we, we uh, at, at Malmö Academy of Music, we also um, educate uh, music uh, teachers. Uh, so, so that's also a way that some, some of our students choose uh, to, to educate themselves uh, and work as uh, teachers either in in school or uh, at the uh, i don't know if uh, uh, it's a common for sweden maybe the culture uh, the what do you say in in english i don't know uh, music school for children uh, and yeah uh, that's also a, a big uh, possibility to work there I mean, in the field of visual arts, I mean, it's uh, it's mostly independent artists after graduating. But I mean, that set is also super important that you know, 
you know, you know your rights and you know um, things about economy and law. So that's a part of our uh, BFA2 course is that we have a mandatory economy and law course because we've seen that if you are actually equipped to run your own business when you graduate, you're most likely to succeed as an artist as well. So that's uh, some of the things that we provide for for the future artists. But I mean, it is indeed a very sort of independent scene where you are, depending on which field that you're working in and what sort of artistic practice that you are engaging in, it's um, it's very it looks very different. Um, there's also I mean, there's also some that goes into to teaching, but it means that you need to have like an international career in order to get a teaching position within an art academy because it's quite attractive in that sense. So, so um, what we are doing is really trying to support our students in thinking about how an artistic practice could look like. And uh, also that sort of um, mix of economy that is linked to, to working in the field um, as an artist as well. So there's a, I haven't explored yet a direct employment going from the art academy and going into any position. I mean, it can be a position that it consists of, of different parts of a practice, but I mean, um, it is because you really want to become an artist. You want to exhibit, you want to make your work. Um, some goes into the commercial art scene, some goes into the institutional uh, institutions, museum shows, uh, go into collections, etc. We have a quite good grant system in Sweden with the Kunstnersnämnden that is a, also for recently graduates that you can apply for a grant to work as an assistant for 10 months for an ex, with an experienced artist. And that's a really interesting support structure than leaving the art academy, then you actually work closely in relation to someone who is experienced. So it's, it's much more sort of collegial in that sense. Um, and I think that has proven quite efficient also in, in shaping up your own future as well. Sounds fantastic, to be honest with you. <laughs> so we have another question here from a student who's interested in the Bachelor of Fine Arts and would like to know what the portfolio should look like. So what should the portfolio look like? I mean, we're kind of bound of the admission uh, system that we have. So, so I would say a portfolio it should be um, a range of the works that is uh, clearly worked through. Um, if you work, depending on which medium you're working in, but always good to put um, scale. We're looking at painting, drawings, uh, the measurements, the what type of media are you working in, uh, duration, uh, make sure that the links are working. Uh, so, so we get a sense of, um, of what sort of materiality are we talking about. Uh, and then we're also looking at, um, at uh, is there some sort of consistency? Is this something that is developed? Um, so that, that is very general. I mean, we get um, we get around 600 applicants. That means that we are looking at um, more than um, I mean, 12,000 work samples uh, when we go through, and we very take everything very seriously when we're looking at it. So we spend the week really looking at it. So, but it's always good when it's um, it has some sort of clarity and um, consistency. Wonderful. Thank you so much. Uh, we have another question, but this time it's about the Fine Arts Master Program. So a student here would like to uh, know if the application for the Fine Arts Master Program, like the, the how precise should she write about the plan, the idea that you would like to realize in the second half of the Fine Arts Program? Uh, should the application be concentrated on her current works or future artistic work and development? So I just need to specify, is it the Master of Fine Arts in Studio, like Studio Practice, is it the Master of Fine Arts in Artistic Research, because that's very different. If it's, um, maybe you want to have that clarified? Yeah, I don't know, to be honest with you. Okay, that's the main well, problem, I'll just go for the, the, the Studio Program first then, and saying that, that we are looking at the works, what works have been produced prior to applying, um, and then also the reason why you want to apply to this particular art academy because we're very, in that sense, we are highly specialized. So it's always good as a, as a uh, student to orient yourself towards what sort of art academy would I like to attend? Um, so, so we're looking at the, the body of works uh, and also the thinking that goes into, the visual thinking that goes into that body of works. If you are applying for the Master of Fine Arts in Artistic Research, we require a proposal with a clear research question 
and a plan for the two years. So it's, it's a distinct distinction between the two different programs. So while talking about the fine arts master in artistic research, we got another question here. They wonder if they also get a studio and how much focus there will be on their artistic practice within the program. So no, for the Master of Fine Arts and Artistic Research, there's no studio link to it. There's a collective workspace because it's a dedication towards writing this proposal. That is, of course, clearly linked to an artistic practice. Like similar on our doctoral program, our PhD program, they don't get studios either. We expect them to have um, um, a, a practice uh, and then they come and do the seminar. So it has a, a similarity to that. So, uh, so the two different um, strands are, are linked together, but there's no individual studios. It's a post-studio program. Wonderful, thank you so much. So while talking about the studio space and everything, um, could you describe the learning environment the students will experience when studying this program? And also maybe talk a little bit about the relationship between students and staff members, because in some of our webinars, students are shocked that we basically talk to each other by first name. So maybe Rebecca could talk a little bit about this. Thank you. <laughs> yes, thank you. That's that's correct. Uh, I mean, uh, Malmö Academy of Music is a very open and um, democratic uh, environment to be in. And, and as you mentioned, we we, uh, we talk to each other by name and, and uh, it uh, should be an equal um, uh, environment to be in. Uh, and it's very social and and it's open from seven to uh, eleven in the night to to for you to be here practicing uh, rehearse with your ensembles and uh, uh, being in the studios and so uh, we also have our uh, library with a lot of of uh, sheet music scores. Uh, music literature and uh, and also a lot of of uh, um, recorded uh, music of course um so so and 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 also to the live for the library you have access uh, also outside the opening hours uh, uh, we we also have a lot of practice rooms open for students uh, in different sizes and for different uh, genres and so uh, and a lot of good instruments for pianists or 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 um, organ uh, players and so um, and also we have three uh, concert halls the biggest uh, venue is uh, Rosenberg Salen uh, it's uh, it's for 400 uh, people uh, and a big stage for choir and symphony orchestra uh, this is also where many many um, instruments do their group lessons, uh, so you can play, uh, use the uh, grand piano, and so uh, we also have uh, uh, one part for the percussion class that you can use uh, different rooms for different, with a lot of instruments. Uh, um, yeah, and and uh, also you have access. I mean, to all rooms. Uh, we have both open rooms and also the locked rooms that you but that you still can have access to so you can use them um, we have a, a smaller uh, chamber music concert hall as well uh, that you also can use for own rehearsing um, uh, yeah uh, so that's pretty much it yeah I mean, the foundation of the, the Art Academy, Malmö Art Academy, is also that um, we do not have a professor school. Traditionally, in the art academies, there were professor schools that you would study with one particular professor. When the school was initiated in 1995, it was very clear from the beginning that it was important that it's the students who invite the professors and teachers into their studio. So um, we as teachers and uh, professors are not able to enter a studio space without an invitation. And I think that's really an, a, a very different approach um, than in many other art academies. And I think that's the core to have that um, in terms of like power relations, but also an understanding on that I choose my own uh, way and curriculum as a student. Of course, it can be very difficult if you come from a background where your schooling had looked 
slightly different and it's been much more structured. But then we as a faculty can help you kind of be guided in, in that, this direction. So when we start the, the academic year, we have these individual tutorials with all the students this year. Um, me and a professor, we did uh, 69 individual sessions over three days and just having a possibility to sit down with the one student and, and two teachers to just talk about what is the progress um, going to be like and then also how are you finding it there so it gives a very like close connection to the staff like to the teachers in that sense we're a very small institution I mean we have 70 students uh, we are 12 members of faculty uh, we know everybody by name we know most of all like most of us know what everyone is doing in terms of practice uh, and also uh, where the struggle can be and where we can help. And I think that is a strength in a, this type of art ac academy. So it's a very different learning environment in that sense. Um, and I would say we have 24-7 uh, access to the studios and to the digital labs. Um, some of the heavy workshops, because we have uh, wood shops and uh, metal workshops, etc., uh, needs to be operated when there's staff um, technicians uh, there, because due to security. Uh, but in general, we have um, accessibility throughout the, the, the day and the night as well. Wonderful. Thank you so much. Sounds almost like a family in a way, which is lovely. <laughs> So, what is the most common mistake that applicants make when they're applying to your programs? Uh, could you maybe help our uh, future applicants here to make better applications? What would you say is the greatest or like most common mistake, Rebecca? Uh, one mistake that happens actually for one for one or two uh, students every year is that they apply for the wrong level. Uh, they apply for maybe a master's program but they were supposed to to apply for the bachelor's program so be aware i mean they have the same kind of same name because they have maybe a, as example the symphony orchestra program but be aware that you really apply for the level bachelor's or master's uh, that you were supposed to because after the last uh, application date there are no nothing we can do about it um also, I mean, really prepare, really take part of the, the information on our uh, web website, uh, what, what is expected of you uh, during the entrance exams. Uh, and also since last year, because of the pandemic, we do a combination of, of um, uh, samples of work uh, and, and uh, uh, entrance exams, auditions on site uh, in Malmö. So really take part of the information uh, provided for your program and specialization instrument so that you, you are sure what, what to do. Uh, and also be aware of the dates. I mean, first you have the 17th of January as last date to apply for the program on university admissions. Uh, but after that, if you apply for the bachelor's program, you are to provide uh, samples of work uh, on January 25, uh, but uh, for master's program on February 23rd. Uh, so, so, I mean, just be aware what, what, you, what information uh, uh, is set for your specialization, and then you will be fine, really prepare well. In time also, I can say that sometimes they, uh, they contact us the, late, the, the last hour and, and don't for your own, uh, yeah, uh, start already now so you know what to do when. I, I mean, I can only say the same thing and also be very clear. I mean, what are you applying to? We have a lot of applicants who are applying to both master's program without thinking about oh, this is very specialized. So, and that's something we look very careful about. Have you considered how your next two years will look like? So be very, you know, really pay attention to what are you applying to and why this particular school, why would that be good for you? So, so take your time, read all the information and make sure, you know, uh, and of course it can always, there can always be things about oh, difficulties uploading, et cetera. But as Rebecca said, like maybe be a little bit more in ahead. Um, but also just be um, be careful and and really, it doesn't um, 
Um, I, it doesn't uh, count as anything positive if you just apply for all three programs, because we consider you as uh, not being very serious in terms of, uh, of not having taken the time to really look thoroughly of what are you applying to. I think that's the most important advice. Wonderful, thank you so much. I think that's a very good tip actually to, to make sure that students are applying to the correct program and that they really highlight that in their application. I mean, I work with all faculties, but we see that a lot. We have students that we, we totally understand that it's difficult to decide on the future, but also we as like organizers of programs, we would definitely like to see that you are keen on studying our program because otherwise, I mean, it's so difficult when we have students applying to like three different faculties, three completely different programs. We understand that you can have a lot of interest, <laughs> but yeah, try to tailor your application so it matches a program you really would like to get into. It will help you tremendously. And while talking about the programs, uh, do your programs have any like special features that you would like to highlight? Something that would make them unique or stand out? Um, I asked this question in another session and one of the coordinators that were there, she was like, no, I'm not really sure. I can't really think of anything. And then all of a sudden she was like, well, wait, we actually have a couple of studios abroad. And I don't know, like, do you have anything that makes you unique? So Rebecca, please go ahead. <laughs> uh, I would say that the, um, one part of that is, is um, the collaborations with the, uh, with the, region with the institutions in the region uh, both as i mentioned earlier about internship but also uh, for for our possibility to to uh, perform concerts in in good rooms i mean in the whole region um, that you are not only using the halls in our own uh, building but also really good concert halls uh, uh, in malmo and also uh, around here um, and uh, that's one thing and also the possibility to actually be here practicing there's a lot of practice rooms uh, that can be different really different from school to school the possibility to actually uh, I mean a lot of your time during uh, your uh, w during your studies here are own work and you really need to uh, have the possibility to to have good facilities uh, for for this work, of course, uh, and and as a third last thing, I would say also um, also uh, the location, the ge geographic location in in uh, Sweden and in Europe, uh, as I mentioned also er earlier about uh, the contact with the uh, afterlife after the studies uh, that you really are are able to build. Uh, during your studies uh, here. Um, yeah. And I would say from um, from um, Art Academy, the fact that you have your own studio, you can close your door, it's a private space and you have a studio from day one uh, until you graduate. It's very, very unique. It's not a shared space uh, except on the Master of Fine Arts for Artistic Research because it has a different structure. Um, that's one thing. Um, the other thing is that you get to do um, solo exhibitions on your master's level. Um, and then also to say that we have a, a studio in Amsterdam and a studio in Berlin, uh, and you write applications. And it's also a part of the pedagogical process of being trained in writing these applications, because that's also the future as the artist as well. So everything we do in the Art Academy in Malmö is also tailored towards you know the different practices as an artist um, but that has I mean has uh, brought tremendous experiences and projects uh, about the students that gone to Berlin and Amsterdam and that's very popular and um, then also the fact that we have very good connections with a school such as Cooper Union in New York um, and Slate School of Arts in London we have like a very good network of, of highly um, international and acknowledged arts academies around the world. And I think that sort of synergy is also really interesting. And then we have a wonderful faculty with, with high profile teachers uh, that is world-class. And I think that, that for us is really kind of shapes up everything. Then we have um, the, the Master of Fine Arts in Artistic Research that is really connecting, this is a new program, connecting to this new field 
the, uh, of the, the PhD programs that we see popping up everywhere. And also, but also again, getting an understanding on what it takes to write a PhD proposal. So you actually get admitted to a program and that's through visual thinking. And that's again, a very specialized program. So I think, I think there are like multiple entries in terms of um, why it would be significant to be here. And I also understand that a lot of people know that, uh, but I think also the scale of it, that we have a close proximity um, to each other is also very unique in that sense. Beautifully, thank you. So I have another question here from a student who would like to know for the fine arts program, will the application interview be held online or on location? Online. Wonderful, yeah, I thought so. <laughs> uh, so besides like talking about the programs and everything and uh, life in Sweden, I mean, uh, I don't know if we actually highlighted the fact that you are in Malmö and not in like Lund, even though Lund University is the name of um, the university. So what would you say is the benefit of actually being located in Malmö? So Rebecca. <laughs> uh, well, I think Malmö is a, a town that is easy, easy to love and to really uh, enjoy by uh, during your stay here. Um, um, I mean, uh, you have everything very close to you. Uh, it's pretty cheap uh, still and and uh, uh, pretty easy to find uh, somewhere to uh, live uh, and stay um, and and Malmö is growing but it still feels pretty small uh, if you prepare to other uh, other uh, cities so uh, you can take your bike with wherever you want and uh, uh, and um, if you want to go outside Malmö it's easy to use the trains and buses there um and still you have uh, you are very close uh, only i mean 20 minutes or so uh, by uh, with the train to copenhagen uh, so so yeah it's a very it's a very uh, it's a very nice town to to live uh, to live in uh, i mean uh, go by the ocean or or uh, or the uh, different uh, different parts of Malmö. They are you have pretty much everything here that you need. I think uh, yes. Perhaps I'll just um, uh, I mean I completely agree with Rebecca and I also said that there's a very vibrant art community here, uh, and then again the proximity to Copenhagen as well is also something that you can go and see quite significant um, exhibitions. I mean it's. You, and we have Lund's Kunsthalle, which is a, like an amazing arts institution. We have Skisernes, the museum sketches in Lund as well, which is also like a part of the university, but like a significant collection. So I think if you want to explore both in terms of research, but also just artistic practice, I mean, it's so, I mean, it's, uh, it's, it's amazing. So, um, so I think it's, uh, it's very good that you specified that, that we are actually based in Malmö. Yeah, it's a, it's a lovely place. So, I mean, and it's good to point it out because a lot of students that contact us, they, they, they have a difficulty finding out like, where are we located? I mean, but not all of our faculties are located in Lund, even though they're connected to Lund and they might have departments in Lund. Some of you guys are spread into like Malmö and also like Helsingborg. Um, I have a question here that we usually get from students and it's about like the job opportunities again, but it's more about like, could you give some examples of jobs that graduates from your programs have found? Uh, do you know of any students that are now having like an international career or uh, anything similar? So, Rebecca. Yes, I mean, it's hard to just um, um, collect in, a, in uh, two rows or so. I mean, uh, of course we have students in, in the symphony orchestras in, in, in Sweden and outside uh on on positions there uh both uh both as a concert masters or uh or so uh, but also of course uh, as tutti uh, musicians um uh, and and we have a lot of uh, uh, freelance musicians that uh, either on solistic basis or in ensembles and such um chamber music or jazz ensembles and so um 
of course, we also have uh, singers uh, on the big scenes. Um, so there's there's uh, uh, not easy to mention one or two, uh, but but uh, uh, we are happy to see that. Uh, Though we know that it's, uh, I mean, it's a hard world to come out as as uh, in in as musicians, musician or composer or, uh, but but many people find their uh, thing to do and and really do it uh, in their way. Um, yes, so we are happy to see that. And we say that if um, looking at our website and looking at our alumni, I mean, it's uh, like spectacular. Uh, the, I mean, someone like Sandra Moinga, who is uh, showing at the new museum in New York right now, just won a big prize in Germany, just kind of like, and she graduated, what, three, four years ago. So I think it's, uh, it's, just, um, it's just worth checking out. What are the alumni doing? It also says something about the Art Academy in a way. So, so I would say it's very different where people are going, but I would say when we do our alumni um, surveys, um, it's interesting because we evaluate in terms of artistic identity. And even after 10 years, 90% are still uh, considering themselves as artists after graduating from the Art Academy. And I think that's quite rare in the sense, because as Rebecca also said, it's a very precarious world that you're entering as an you need to be um, you need to find your way your own individual way that's not you know going directly into a corporate position this is very much about also networks and and self-organization and and um, just sort of practicing as an artist so so i think it's always a good you know advice to to check out who graduated from that school and how are they doing very good tip uh, also, I have a question here from a student that's been upvoted by other students and attendees here today. So I think we should answer this question if possible. So uh, for the Bachelor of Fine Arts, what are the most common mistakes that students put in their portfolio? What would you say would be the most common portfolio mistake? <laughs> it's a very broad question. <laughs> so I would say, but I think, uh, I mean, then we get, since it's online, then we get these tiny kind of thumbnails and then you click on them and then the format is not right. So you can't really scale it up. Then there's no measurement. So you don't know if that painting is like uh, uh, 20 centimeters by 30 centimeters or two meters by three meters. I mean, things like that, because that's the unfortunate thing about, you know, looking at it online. So be very kind of specific in, in materials, but also scale uh, because that I think, and then also make sure that the works are working. So if you're linking to a video file on Vimeo, make sure that it's without password or at least that we know the password. So things like that are the common mistakes. And you kind of spend a lot of time trying to figure out, you know, is this, you know, because we need to see everything. We will see everything. So, um, so just to make sure that we, you provide us with all the information that we need in order to assess the work. Wonderful, thank you so much. The, the part with the password is really annoying, <laughs> to be honest with you. We, we encounter that at other faculties as well. And it's just like, dear God, no. <laughs> so uh, thank you so much to both like Rebecca and Mai. You've been fantastic in answering all of these questions. And also thank you to all the participants and prospective students that have been listening into us today. If you have any questions after this webinar, I have put a few links here uh, in the chat that you can use. And I will basically keep the webinar open for like a minute or two so that you can basically save these links uh, so that you can use them in order to make better applications and also contact us if you have any questions. And one thing I would like to point out is that we do have a system where you can chat with students because obviously now you've been in a webinar with like people that are paid to, to help you guys. <laughs> but if you would like to just reach out to students in, um, in Sweden, like at Lund University and see what the real like student experience is like, you're more than welcome to start chatting with them. Uh, so they are available every day and you just sign up and you talk to them and they will give you an honest opinion about what it's like to be living and studying in Sweden. But otherwise, I would just like to say thank you. And I would like to say 
good luck on your applications. We are genuinely and truly looking forward to receiving your applications and hope to see you in Lund, or in this case then Malmö in the future. So thank you guys and take care.